Hello everyone, my name is Dramat and here's a guide in Diamond on how to carry with Talia. Now, this is going to be a bit of a different video. Hey Mardinger, I don't know what exactly does here, but I'm gonna do some uh, pre-talk before the video. Now, the main aspects of this game, this particular game, and the reason for this tutorial is that to show you uh, the skill level of the players and also to show you how to carry with Talia and how to try to abuse when it's possible. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the mastery points for this game, there are only two players, just two, in this game on their team which have high mastery points. They are Jin and Riven. The rest, uh, especially Heimerdinger, they don't really have that much. And even though Heimerdinger plays is a mid main, he doesn't have experience, so we're going to try to abuse that, okay? And uh, on our team, uh, the experienced players are me and Yasuo by mastery points. Probably they might be experienced players by other stats, but their hammer didn't have any any mastery points at all. So we're going to try to abuse that. And uh, that play that you've seen on the intro is kind of um, proof that you can do more with Leah just by being there and being a bit fed and doing your ways, your things. So. Let's start this. Also, one more thing. At the start of the game, I specified for Rek'Sai to camp top lane because if Riven doesn't get fed in this game, we have a huge chance to actually win mid to late game because I have the tools to one-shot people. I have the tools to one-shot Jin, Heimerdinger and Fiddlesticks and I will be able to do that later on. And I also probably win lane because Heimerdinger has teleport and I will try to go for the kill as much as I can. And also I expect Botlin to do pretty fine, if not I will help them with the amount of CC we have. So basically we're focused on negating the Riven. Now here we are on lane phase. I'm going the standard Electrocute build. Against the Heimerdinger uh, it's interesting, it's a very odd matchup, you don't really see it often, you don't really see it at all honestly. But what I usually do is try to mm, fight him with my full combo WEQ and stay away from the turrets. If you catch him without his turrets he's gone. He doesn't have real kill pressure on you unless he ults. And uh, if you play smart with his WE, uh, you see the damage main source of damage comes from the WE and the Q's laser beams. So you basically have to play around that. But still, uh, the purpose of the video is mostly focused on how to carry. And we're interested here in just farming and getting to that sweet level 3, doing the poke, dodging the spells as much as we can. And here we already see a small trade where weird things happen, honestly, because uh, Heimerdinger went first because he has the pressure on mid lane, so you gotta tell your team that if you can. And here I couldn't do really much uh, to help them because there was no way that I could follow faster than Heimer without screwing up my lane. Now, here you won't see much, you will see just the standard fight now, also Yasuo uh, te teleporting, but uh, not that crucial here. Also, he kills uh, Jin, but will die, and I will die too, to that fiddlesticks. Moving back to the mid lane here, I already had start, I already had a bad start, but we don't mind, we don't mind it because we're interested in going for the Heimerdinger kill. Uh, he didn't teleport because the wave will be pushed uh, on his side on for the good stuff. Now, the fun thing is that if Jin has two kills, our bot lane will start winning because we have an Alistar into a Jin. Also, notice that. Notice, please, that uh, W. Also, how did that even hit? Notice how I dodged the E, I mean. It's important against Heimerdinger to play a little more uh, unexpected, I'd say. Just as you would against a LeBlanc or to move a little bit further or against the Diana to move a little bit to the side. This is another reason where you can dodge the, the bombs if you play smart about it. Against the Gunt Heimerdinger he probably just perma push him and stick into his turrets. But your damage can and will probably eventually take down these turrets. Now let's get on to the how to actually carry part. Now here I see Yasuo coming. And he kind of waits too much there, I expected him to actually follow. Because here I'm just getting randomly poked. And by this movement, he should have deduced that I'm here. Now if I got hit by that, I would have died probably, but I sidestepped it nicely. And here is a free kill for our top laner. Again, we want him to get fed, okay? We want that. Sejrani soloed the trick, by the way, here, which is an awful thing for us. 
but we still don't mind it. I got a bit of gold. Uh, I got a bit of an advantage uh, by uh, having the assist and the level. And here is the moment where we can start actually fighting him. I think also I'm going for the standard build. Uh, I think you've seen it countless times already. It's nothing special. Okay, it's nothing different. And we just go for uh, the kill on Hammerdinger as much as we can. Okay, standard pushing, nothing spectacular again. Trying to clear the wave, trying to move bot lane if possible. And will be possible. Hold. Uh, Fiddlestick has no fear, I think. And I'm not really interested in Fiddlesticks right now. So I'll just do a W to stop the Jin from ever advancing. Now I kinda wanted here Tristana to get the kill but uh, we could not risk that much. Oh my god, that was a fake kill there. Did not, really did not expect this again. And here we see a simple flash from uh, Rek'Sai and as you can see Heimerdinger as I said is not that experienced. So you can, uh, when you see people that are not on the main uh, on their main role or they are playing champions that they are not experienced with you should tell your jungler that and you should abuse that as much as you can now i know our top laner will feed a bit and riven will be the player that plays actually in their team also gene a bit but we're interested in actually in actually having so we're going to get all the kills i got four honors for this game by the way four honors out of all of them basically, 4 and 4, four and four, four from 4. But still, Yasuo is also a good player because he has a lot of mastery points. I mean, he should be a good player if he has, but still he is decent, he's doing fine. And here I start pinging if I recall correctly that, um, that Heimerdinger will come, and if I don't, I will they see him, they see him anyway. But uh, our team did a pretty bad uh, trade, doesn't matter. I start to follow him, they know I'm there. And I just go for the kills because they. Th this is still diamond, okay? They <laughs> don't expect uh, some things. I mean, they should have backed there. They should have backed long time ago, but they got caught by the asshole ult. As you can see, he doesn't have ult. I don't need to show you that, but that's what happened. You can watch the replay if you don't believe me. Please believe me. Still, here we go for the first tower because Ribbon actually dealt a lot of damage to your tower. Now, here, good. Good uh, W from Yasuo and we get the first uh, tower further pushing me away up above in gold as you can see by the uh, by the budget by the bounty that I have on my head now here I have the core items our uh, our uh, team doesn't do pretty well on top but the only thing I'm interested in again is pushing first before I'm going top and I'll push as you can see here and move top slowly Gonna get the Riven, free kill on the Riven, free shutdown on the Riven if I recall correctly, but I don't think, uh, I'm not sure actually. Now, pushing faster, moving faster, damage on the top tower, getting plates, way important, way more important than anything else, if you think you can carry and if you want to be the carry, plates are your friend besides obviously kills and rolls. So, get the plates, put the vision word there, get more plates. Having double buff here and being the same level as Riven, I know she probably can't kill me yet solo, instantly at least. But if I miss uh, W, I'm dead. I have Ignite and she has Teleport, so that's another advantage, but it requires quite a good Riven without a Flash and all to kill Atalia, and that's why she doesn't try anything here. I poke her as much as I can, as you can see here, a lot of poke. And scuttles more gold again poking as much as i can forcing her to back away from minions and then pushing uh that's making her losing xp as much as i can but still basically trying to get the level advantage trying to get the poke down trying to get the tower now here as you can see from the poke i got also poked a bit uh and here she did a perfect flash and here i fucked up yeah, I should have killed her there. I should have killed her there and I failed. And as you'll see here, I'm way too greedy. And even though Riven is there, I'm gonna get 
shut down by the Sejuani, which is good on its own. Because I did not give any guild, any gold towards uh, towards the Riven or towards the Hammerding or towards the Jin. Also, our team wins now because there are four people on bot lane and they are winning the fights. And Rexa is pretty strong compared to anyone in their team. So what we'll do, a Jin and Heimerdinger and Rek'Sai? So, our bot lane starts to massively scale, because at this point, you ha I helped both a bit, I have tried to get them up, I helped uh, Rek'Sai get a little kills uh, there and there, Heimerdinger helped us too, but as you can see, he's 0-5, like, he's way behind schedule and way behind anything. And here, I start to get the kill. This is a scene that you've seen at the start of the video. And here are some mistakes that Hammer still did, like this. If he, if that hit me, uh, I would have probably died. If I flashed that again, I would have probably died in circumstances. Here, Fiddlesticks didn't instantly fear me. That was another mistake. The flash was good here, Riven actually got a bit caught, Fiddlesticks failed massively, Riven missed her W there, that's a very good thing. And here is the moment my team starts to ask themselves what the fuck am I doing, <laughs> and uh, I just fight her as much as I can. Now I have here a full uh, red and Q spam and I can fight her, I know I can fight her, but that will not matter because we back off. We have here Tristana helping us. Uh, we ping to do Baron uh, and Herald first, but we will do Baron and it will get stolen, that's why the game lasts so long. Right here, a, a word that has not been seen apparently. So, getting that, the itemization again is standard, and in games in which you want to carry, you should take that blue buff because Pilia is mana reliant and you don't need Archangel stuff for that, you need the burst and the blue buff if you can. Pushing, standard pushing, not fighting, pushing, getting more gold, getting more scaled, being as far as I can in gold, and trust me, I'm ahead. <laughs> I failed here getting those, but it's no matter, doesn't matter, I go above like 40 words here, and I start the Drake, my team will ping me, why am I doing that? Well, because I can ult here, and we get the free Drake. If you have the advantage, if you are fed, usually you will be able to zone them, because of your poke. Moving fast, Riven gets caught, Fiddlesticks holds behind me, I'm getting in a huge, huge uh, corner and I die, but the rest of their team will fall because, well, because Riven got uh, caught and Riven was the cornerstone of their team. Here, Heimerdinger gets caught, Riven gets caught by uh, Rek'Sai and at this point, that was so close. At this point, uh, we are already way too ahead to matter. Getting a simple Herald, getting a simple Tower, getting a simple Inhibitor. All of these were facilitated because I actually carried to the mid game. Now, here in this team fight, I didn't do much, I just died, I got caught. But Riven got caught as well, and basically, we were the main cornerstones of the team. And. Our team has another player that do fine, does fine, and besides that, there was Rexai and Tristana, so basically, yeah, that's kind of a lot. Here, my team, you as usual, gets caught after uh, after doing uh, extra positioning, staying too much, and they basically die. Here, if I recall correctly, Alistra will get caught too uh, again, and that's some troll gold that we don't like. But moving back to our favorite mid laner, I start to go around these zones because I expect them to have no words, since there is a lot of time that passed and yeah. But here I get a little scared, and that should have hit. I get a little scared and I move away because I was cornered, even though I deal a lot of damage. As you can see, the potential of carrying with Talia, the damage is simply ridiculous. Okay? Uh, here I start to position for the uh, Baron that I, that I want my team to do, uh, but you'll see that Sejuani will steal it because, well, our jungler's might is, uh, well, not that good. And I don't think he even smites, even though 
Sejuani is higher level, he will not even smite it, or he will smite it exceptionally bad, but that doesn't matter. Here, when you're ahead, you should position yourself as such so that you can find people and you can actually full combo them. Now I have flash, okay? I have flash and I, I can actually move around here a bit, going right over that. My team gets caught for no reason, I don't know why they were there. But that doesn't stop us really, that doesn't stop us much. Okay, what is Atalia doing there? Extremely fed, obviously a lot of damage will be in their head, but that doesn't matter. Because, because they will actually do a lot here by dealing damage and so... Uh, I think here is the mistake that I will do, I position myself extremely bad uh, and I will die. And uh, Riven will not die because uh, Tristana mispositioned herself also. She should have positioned better to get the kill. That doesn't matter though. Even though Riven is fed, I'm fed too and I can stop her. Uh, Riven will not solo carry unless she has the flash and ult and is strong enough to pull properly. Ult. Catching Sejuani off guard. But dealing W towards the teleport. So we don't really have a problem with the Haymardinger, even though he ulted. Now here, Sejuani ulted, Hamer ulted, so that's two ults already which convey us some advantage. And, well, just to lead things, being fed, trying to carry, uh, you have, well, you have enough damage if you farm a little, if you farm good. If you are ahead in gold, you usually are able to one-shot squishy supports, squishy ADCs, squishy mid laners, and even some top lane bruisers that are, uh, are squishy or mages or so. Still, again, doing the best I can to actually find the Baron for free, getting two solo kills alone basically with two combos. And I'm gonna try to keep this Sejuani as far as I can. But I get scared of Riven and I move back, because Riven, with all which she has, can instantly nuke me. And as you can see here, Sejuani got the sweet sweet Baron buff and the game will last a little longer. We're going to do a fight here again because we're greedy. Where Xai will get caught, he has 7 deaths at this point. Tristana narrowly escapes and, well, I abuse what can be abused. I got already 3 kills randomly on Heimerdinger and Fiddlesticks in the past minutes and a half. If you want to carry, you should find those people. And in lower elos you will. The people that misposition, the people that do not clear your words and get on them when you are in their jungle. In their jungle. And you can abuse these things as much as you can by doing one shot. You can position properly. If you cannot hit the W when you see the target, that's the point where you should start going for the for the practice tour. My uh, voice is a little down. Here is the last fight and before I ult, I want to actually show you how we won this game. Now, even though they won a Baron and they still have the buff, well, Fiddlesticks will get caught here. Instant Flash from Alistar, instant ult from Yasuo, W from Yasuo to deny all the damage from them. A quite bad jump from Tistana, but still a decent positioning. Two men W, not dealing that much damage as expected. So basically, if you notice, this doesn't still doesn't really look like a win team fight because Rexai jumped on Sejuani, and they can actually kill us here, so that's a problem. Okay, so what do we do? We try to hope that Riven won't instantly jump on us. Tristana instantly pushes Jin away, but doesn't kill him. I instantly move with the Q and E. So I kill Riven if she jumps on me. I have the Ignite, remember. Now, I go here for the Jin. He hits Q, he hits her first out on me, and Flash instantly to escape the damage. And the next thing is very curious, and I don't know if this is the thing that won us the game, but certainly, it's probably certainly the thing that did. I expected here... I expected here, uh, wait, before that, probably certainly it's a very bad way of saying things, and do not, that, do not say that. I expected there the Hammerdinger, and also here I wanted to do a full Q and ignite him. I was expecting probably to die, okay, because the cannon was in my line of sight, I wouldn't one-shot him, and I would have only, only how much? 700 HP, but his, <laughs> his auto didn't crit. 
and he had how much? He had like 75% critical chance. Now in this scenario, if he would have killed me, there would still be a full HP Rek'Sai to deal with, but probably my team would still have won here. So basically just went uh, and finished the game. Not nothing spectacular. He just took suicided, or well, almost. And we finished the game right here. Now, I want one more time to show you the last fight at full speed. Because I kinda, kinda showed you a bad version of the fight. And let me just do one more jump back. There we go. Now, full speed, I'm gonna stay around here. As you can see, instant flash from Alistar, instant W from Yasuo, instant W EQ from me, hitting to target. Um, the mistake here was the Drex I went there. We would have the need for him in this fight, and I positioned myself as such, so I dodged a bit of damage here. Now, the winning condition for me on this 1 vs 1 was not get caught by Heimerdinger and also, well, <laughs> not die to that he should have killed me here i'm positive that he should have killed me but yeah so this is the game right here uh this is the how to carry with lia guide basically the main things is that you have to abuse the people that have the lowest mastery points or the fewest games on set champions or the lowest elo because the platinum fire four will play less will play worse than the plat one if the matchmaking allows so basically you have to profit on those things that's one thing another thing is if your mid laner does not have experience you have to fight him you have to win the lane even though if it's a counter he will do mistakes okay most people play champions that they have no idea how to play in ranked which is a stupidity on its own besides that you should find the players in your team that struggle in the matchups like Yasuo and Riven Riven got fed and I was expecting Yasuo to lose because Riven is one of the three champions that in the meta right now is doing fine and winning. With a huge win rate, with a huge pick rate, so yeah. Try to tell your jungler where to go, try to go where the action is headed. Try to be there, try to ult, try to get some kills on bot lane. Those are some basic tips which you, sh you already know as a Talia main if you are one. But still, the most important thing is try to find the mistake in their team. The guy who will get caught, the guy who will die and try to one-shot him because you can do that as today, even if you're not fed. If you're 1-0, one, 1 or 2-3-4 in score and you have like the 8 CS per minute or 7, you can practice that in the practice tool, there's no excuse, I don't want to hear from you that one. You will one-shot, you will one-shot some people. Okay, you will not one-shot necessarily the Leona or the Brown, maybe you will sometimes if you're fed enough, but you will one shot the Janna, the Nami, the Fiddlesticks, the Vayne, the Kaiza, and so on. If you put your words precisely in their base, in their jungle, in their zone, or if you hide behind corners and expect them and predict some W's. Besides that, there is a mental fight between you and the experienced player or the experienced players in their team. If they are better than you, then you should play accordingly, like I did with that Riven. Probably Riven knows how to play. But because I actually managed to use E all the time and was a bit fed, she was a bit scared also of me. So she played safer, which in in turn made me stronger, which made me, well, 12-4, basically. I was able to carry because Riven did not go full on me, okay? Some players will go for the Talia being full brave, even though they die. If they, if they kill the Talia, well, good job. You killed one of the strongest players in the team, but in, the, in our scenario we kind of scaled and Tristana, Yasuo, Rek'Sai were way more useful than their counterparts because of the mid game and the early game really, because of how much we did there. So try to carry at all stages of the game, try to play accordingly. These are my tips for now, these are my pieces of advice. This, yeah, I don't know if that works, but still, that wording. I really hope you enjoyed this game, I really hope you liked it, and I really hope that the next game you will win, so go there, put your song put your jam your song that makes you strong the motivated to win watch some plays by some players that you like and then go into ranking game with your champion which is Talia or others that you have a lot of mastery points on your experience go 
pick your lane and win the game, destroy the opponents, carry them, and you can do it. That's it for now. Have a nice night, day, whatever. Goodbye, guys.